Welcome to This Week in Hearing, where listeners get the latest information on all things happening in the world of hearing healthcare, from device technology, to pharma therapeutics, to practice management, and much, much more. My name is Tony Solsona, and I'm excited to be the guest host on this show today. I'm also excited to be introducing someone who, like me, has been in the hearing healthcare industry for over 20 years, and where we worked together for a number of those years in the middle ear implantable medical device and traditional hearing aid space. With that, John, it's good to see you again, and welcome to the show. Thanks, Tony. I'm happy to be here. You know, John, a lot of people in the industry probably already know you, but just in case for those few who don't, why don't we start off by you telling us a little bit about your industry background and particularly what brought you to New Hira? Sure. Uh, my name is John Luna. If you don't know me. Um, I am the chief revenue officer for New Hira. Um, I've been in the hearing space for about 30 years, um, started out in my 20s. And um, like Tony said, we've worked together in the past over the last 20 years. I've had the privilege to work and lead teams uh, and work with great teams in the industry and the hearing space um, for the past uh, 30 years and 20 years as an executive with both incumbent and startup companies. Um, I've launched um, and commercialized class one to class three devices in the space with a lot of industry firsts from the first uh, omnidirectional to directional switching product in the early 90s, which was remote controlled um, all the way through uh, the first implantable middle ear product uh, with the, the uh, sound bridge. And then um, one of the first hearable companies with sound ID in the Bay Area uh, in uh, around 2006 timeframe um, at AAA in Minnesota. So um, we've, uh, you know, launched a lot of new innovative technologies and I've, I've been a part of a lot of change in the industry and continue to do so um, in the hearable space with New Hera. That's fantastic. And, you know, John, let's uh, keep it between you and I. Let, let's not let anybody know that we've been around that long. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that said, John, the industry landscape over the last few years has changed a lot since you and I worked together. Even the term hearable has evolved since it was introduced by Nick Hum back in 2014. We've even seen several incumbent big five companies position their earbuds like the Signia X, Active X, and others make headline news like the Sonova purchasing news of the Sennheiser Consumer Business Group and Jobber recently announcing their new earbuds. Why do you think the hearable segment continues to evolve? Well, I think there's multiple factors. Um, you know, the growth in true wireless earbuds over the last five years uh, has just uh, soared. I mean, in millions and millions of units sold globally. Um, I think that's a big part of it. So the consumer acceptance of something that's an all-in-one convergence of technologies that allows you to do, you know, not just uh, hearing, but listening and streaming and communication and voice activated uh, use of Siri and other Google assistants, uh, uh, you know, or other voice activated assistant technologies uh, is one aspect. I think the work from home uh, aspect of COVID-19 uh, required a lot more people to have something in their ears uh, all day long on video calls like this. Um, but I think it crosses all age demographics and the form factors are acceptable to have something in your ear. So I think that's a, a big part of why we're seeing um, you know, companies like Nuhira and, and others and the big five incumbents uh, and new entrants to the market uh, bring in form factors other than traditional hearing aids and, and converge the technology from, from hearing healthcare and hearing aid technology and amplification technology into uh, products that can do more than that. Uh, so I think that that's a big part of it. Um, and the interest level is high because hearing aid growth has kind of been flat uh, and, and declined in 2019, 2020. Uh, but if we, if we look at the industry and the growth opportunities uh, for the 1 billion people uh, worldwide uh, that have a mild uh, and, and hearing loss that could, could benefit from a hearing device, um, in many of those countries and in many of those cases, they need a non-custom product. And so this type of form factor also allows uh, and successfully allows you to fit most ears um, and provide then different levels of technology. So I think that's one of the, the driving factors. And the, and the market growth, um, like I said, uh, continues to outpace the growth in traditional hearing devices and those form factors. John, that makes a lot of sense, whether you're an industry insider to see how the market is developing or you're a consumer and for oneself see how these devices come into play and make life and communication um, a lot better for them. You mentioned others. 
And we've also seen major companies like Bose and Apple enter the hearing aid market uh, by way of hearables. In your opinion, yeah. do you think that these entrants are encouraging or discouraging for the evolution of hearable market? I think the evolution of, of the hearing aid, hearable and OTC market are all um, also converging. And so I, I think that the entrance to the category uh, will raise the water level for everybody. I mean, the, the challenge is, you know, what the devices can do, the target consumer, the target hearing loss, regulations. Um, you know, ultimately, I think it's good to have competition. It's healthy. Uh, innovation, like, like, like I've been uh, doing my entire career in the industry, it's always driving either a new business model, a new form factor, a new solution, uh, a new device um, that, that solves the same problems that the consumer experiences, but um, it, it does it in a different way, at a different price point, a different delivery model. And so I think competition is healthy. I think innovation is healthy, and we can learn from each other. But at the same time, um, safety and efficacy is you know, the, the number one thing that needs to happen with regard to devices that get into consumers' uh, ears for use, especially with hearing loss. So I think that's something that the industry is looking at, the government's looking at, jurisdictions around the world are looking at. So um, I think it's healthy. I think that the new category that, uh, as an example, the self-fit category that was driven by one of the, the newcomers to the category uh, is exciting because it's not OTC, right? It's, it's a direct-to-consumer self-fit opportunity um, and that that's opened a new category of hearing device uh, in the United States, at least. And so that's something that's um, exciting, new and different than the OTC. So that that is also a different category that, you know, everyone's looking at. But I think safety, efficacy and FDA oversight is important. John, that was a really great, insightful perspective on where we have come from and where we are in hearables today. You know, John, not everyone in the hearing healthcare space realized that Nuhira has integrated the widely used NAL NL2 hearing aid fitting algorithm formula in, into its IQ Buds application. How do you see this becoming a competitive advantage for Nuhira when the OTC regulations are finalized in the US? Sure, uh, that's a good question. We, we already have a competitive advantage with regard to the hearable space um, and the validation that was done in 2018 by the National Acoustics Laboratory in Australia, led by Harvey Dillon. Um, EarID was uh, validated uh, as an automated uh, audiometry uh, in a wearable hearing device in that study from 2018. So uh, the, the IQ Buds application has the EarID functionality to it, uh, and it's both for iOS and Android. It does use NAL NL2, which is the standard in, you know, for audiologists globally. Um, and uh, many manufacturers globally with regard to hearing algorithms for fitting uh, to hearing loss needs. Um, so it's, an, it's a competitive advantage now. Uh, we're in a clinical study um, again with uh, National Acoustics Laboratory for our hearing aid product. And uh, that, uh, you know, I can't speak to the specifics of the clinical study we're currently in, right. but the advantage with uh, the base of uh, ear ID and the NAL NL2 algorithm, and then what we're doing now and then in the future with the product uh, will continue to be a, a huge part of Nuhira's competitive advantage in both the hearable space and in the hearing aid space uh, as we evolve. That's great, that's good news. And John, going back to the OTC legislation, given that it's pending, do you think that traditional hearing aid channels can integrate products like the Nuhira IQ Buds 2 Max hearable into their business model? Yeah, I mean, they can do it now. I mean, we are uh, hearable in the consumer electronics space. So the IQ Buds 2 Max product and the IQ Stream TV are great options for any practice and any clinic. Um, and, and as you see in, in major retail globally uh, for us uh, to offer consumers an option, right? There are you know presets in the product and there's uh, personalization in the product. And the personalization allows a consumer to take a profile and have then the NAL NL2 algorithm and EIRID uh, you know, provide them some augmentation to their hearing, which provides hearing enhancement with the current product. Um, you know, the, um, the, the models are available and should be offered as an option by clinics, I think, uh, because, you know, having owned 15 retail clinics and knowing that, you know, 30, 40% of your consumers walk out the door, you know, the patients, clients, whatever you call them, depending on your business model, 
you know, that person comes in for help, you go through a diagnostic process, whether it's just a screen or whether you have done a full diagnostic workup as an audiologist or clinic. Um, and, you know, you found that person has 100% discrimination. They've got uh, problems and only situational uh, events in their life, whether that's, uh, you know, restaurants, social gatherings, or just when they're out and about on the street. Um, and they have difficulty hearing uh, in certain environments, but not all, the, all environments and not all the time and not with everybody. So um, a product like a hearable is just the solution for that. And these consumers are also walking out the door because they've got a mild hearing loss. They've got 100% discrimination when they're in the, the test booth. Um, but they still struggle, right? They still have difficulty in certain environments. This is the product for them. And it allows them to um, have something from you as the professional in that recommendation to say, hey, um, I've got a solution for you. And when you graduate to a, a need for a, uh, a hearing aid or a hearing device or, or your lifestyle changes, you know, then come back to me and I'll have another solution for you at a different price point, at a different technology level. Um, and so you, you can have then something for that person that's walking out the door. So I think, yeah, they can offer something now. And I think, you know, they can compete with OTC and DTC as that evolves. Um, and, and offer, you know, the simple solution a lot of people have problems with is television, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, even when you have normal here uh, in a household <laughs> with multiple people, uh, you, have, uh, you have different volume preferences. Right. For example, I like things uh, a little bit softer than my wife or other family members do as far as television volume. They like uh, the sound bar and the bass. Uh, and so I, uh, I prefer, uh, you know, probably because I'm on calls all the time, all day long, uh, you know, to when I'm watching television, maybe at a different level. So just a simple solution of a television streamer uh, with a hearable product uh, is an easy solution for under $650 that a consumer can purchase from you that gives them, you know, that full control of not only television, but everything else in their life with regard to controlling their soundscapes and, you know, active noise cancellation, streaming of telephone calls, streaming of video calls, streaming of Netflix, um, and then the hearing augmentation and then uh, different settings for different environments in the world. So from working out to the street to um, just being at the office. So, I mean, there's a lot of options and you can provide that to the younger consumer. Our average consumer is you know, 52 years old uh, and the average hearing aid purchaser is 68 to 72 years old, depends on who you ask. So, you know, we can bring a consumer in with some need at, at a much younger age uh, and then, you know, offer them solutions as they graduate through the process and have that customer for life and have that loyalty to your clinic and the value of your services and your professional opinion. So I guess the, 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 that was the long answer to the simple answer. Yes, they can offer it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great because, you know, as you mentioned, not only does this give an opportunity for a clinician to broaden their portfolio with products and solutions, but you talk about a younger, uh, a younger clientele that younger clientele is really going to benefit from your streamer, for example, where it's a very easy setup process. The quality is amazing and it fits the lifestyle of so many different people. So that opens yeah. up the door for uh, acceptance, awareness, adaptability. Uh, those are all phenomenal fronts that New Hero is on right now. And so, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, everybody does everything on their phone, right? Uh, right. You don't have, you don't have an uh, iOS product, I know, <laughs> but uh, a lot of people have either Android or iOS and, and everybody uses apps. Everybody uses yes. their phone uh, to control ev most everything they do all day. And for that younger consumer who's still working, right? They're still in the, the working world. Many of them are working from home, either full-time or part-time uh, due to the current pandemic. And, um, you know, it provides a tool that can get them through their daily lives. As you know, I mean, I um, have had something in my ears for years, um, but, you know, I wear these you know, six, seven, eight hours a day streaming on calls like this or video calls. And so, you know, I go through a full battery cycle and I re recharge or I have a second set. You know, not everybody has the opportunity to have two sets that they can just switch out. But, um, but I mean, it, it's something that is, um, it's functional. It, it, it's, it works and it's comfortable. And it's comfortable for all the, you know, for situational wear or, or you know, wear throughout the day. Um, and it's really convenient. The other thing is very important, and not only did you speak to it, but you're proving that point just by your visual presence, and that is you've got a good-looking device, low profile, and even on our conversation here, crystal clear conversation. Uh, that's proof positive of what you're able to deliver with this product and products down the road in, in, in your portfolio. So I, yeah, I, I and, and, do the team for that. And if there was a you know noise, uh, external noise or outside noise or 
some other noise, I just have to touch it. And I turn on the active noise cancellation and now I'm in silence just hearing you. So it's pretty cool. Again, another obvious, but something to, to uh, bring up, that touch feature is excellent for people who've got dexterity issues as well too, because it's, yeah. just, a, it's just a tap. And yeah. a lot of uh, ways that you can modify how you uh, navigate through those different options in, in the app is fantastic as well too. Yeah, no, it's, it, they're exciting products to bring to market. And, um, you know, you know, working globally, I hear the same story and the success uh, of the product worldwide. So uh, it's, um, yeah, it's something that, you know, clinics should think about. Um, and um, they're fun to use. They're fun to, to, to share the use cases uh, with your patients and clients. And it's something that, you know, we sell direct to consumer, but it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be in every clinic uh, right. in the U.S. And John, you have particularly seen this in your lengthy career, I've seen it as well too, and that is we have evolved to this point. And certainly the, the climate that we're in over the last two years, year and a half or so with the pandemic has probably expedited that acceptance and desire to make life easier for communication, not only for devices, but communicating with people in everyday situations. So I applaud, you know, new here and all the companies that are progressively looking for that, that elevation and expanding to help people who have uh, hearing concerns and just want a better lifestyle in general, uh, like products from Nuhira. You know, I think this was a really insightful conversation. From your perspective, it means a lot. Uh, I think we probably could talk for uh, maybe another hour or so on that. Yeah. But I think it's a great starting point to have our listeners learn a little bit more about the hearable market, how it's come to be, and some of the options available, obviously, including New Hero. So uh, with that, John, I want to personally thank you uh, for being a guest today and, and spending some time to really present this information. And I also want to thank the entire team behind the show that makes this happen every single week. And of course, we have to big shout out to all those who are tuning into this uh, podcast and video uh, podcast weekly. So with that, John, again, thank you very much. And that concludes our episode today. Have a great day. So long. Thanks everyone. so much, Tony. You're Appreciate very welcome, it. Thank John. you. Take care.